What's up everybody, welcome to a new video and welcome to the Labo Cosmetica Center. And in this video, I'm going to show you the beginning, the start, the finish, and the finalization of the first product that I have been in Marco's shoes from the beginning with the development of my world tour, trying and testing this product in most harsh conditions, including Asia, during monsoon season, to finalize a product that I've been working on for a couple of years now. And I'm proud to say I now feel the passion and the responsibility coming to a birth of a new product. In this video, we're going to show you everything that we did to achieve the result as we now find HPC 2.0 as our newest son in the Labo Cosmetica family. You know we like a challenge. You know we like to be different. You like to think outside of the box. So to give a little bit of a context, what kind of a head start or difficulty we gave us when we removed PFAS, AKA Forever Chemicals, from our product since the very beginning. PFAS being, other name, Forever Chemicals, being a substance that is unbreakable in nature and will be there forever. Now taking away these products gave us a challenge. Imagine doing a race or a marathon with extra weight, no shoes, and any downside you can think of to give a challenge to remove these type of chemicals to save the environment and save the persons that are using these products. For that, we specialized mostly to getting out these PFAS out of the HPC 2.0. Another challenge is to find the balance between a standalone and a top coat. And to understand what a standalone is and what a top coat is, we have to look at their characteristics. A standalone being Resistance against mechanical action of washing, having a longer duration versus a top coat that gives silks, bead and chemical resistance. These two facets need to be combined in one to make that what we call now HPC 2.0. For that, we chose a specific type of raw material that we found during the development of this product, namely the polysiloxan. The polysiloxan is from a family. It's a very broad family. There is a very much difference in polysiloxans. And by having the polysiloxan alone, you do not have the total amount of ingredients necessary to make a product like HPC 2.0. So imagining having the wheat or the grain of the pasta but then still needs to be made a pasta. After that, it needs to be prepared. And after that, you get the dish that you can actually eat. And we chose the best siloxan, polysiloxan, findable on the market at this day to put inside of HPC 2.0. We could start now by showing you application, gloss, beading and sheeting. But we are Labo Cosmetica. I want to take you with me on the journey we had creating this product, giving context because what am I holding in my hands here? I'm going to show you in the next clip. So guys, we moved the situation outside to tell you a little bit of context in what we believe to be a standalone coating versus a top coat coating. A standalone coating is able or should be able to do all the things that you want from a ceramic coating. So it needs to provide a certain hardness that then is decisive for the duration of the product, standing by itself, hoping that everything goes well. Then you have the amount of slickness versus a top coat that has to provide beading sheeting, that slickness, and of course, chemical protection. So to determine Hardness, they thought up a couple of tests, what you could perform to get inside the substrate hardness of a coating or a coating on a substrate. Okay, so hardness, how does that translate back into the real world? Now, if you think about Blindle, after you put Blindle, Blindle is like a brick, extremely rough surface, not very smooth. It's hard, yes, but not very smooth. Then we take something like HPC, something very smooth, but it's not hard. Now to determine this hardness, they chose to use the pencil hardness test found in the ISO 15184 or the ASTM 3363. 
D3363. My apologies, details matter in this case. Where then a certain type of pencil from a certain hardness is placed in this device, placed it under a certain angle, like this, and this weighs about a kilo or two kilos out of my head, maybe it's on here. No, it's very heavy, don't drop this. Then it's then put on the substrate, and the substrate then is being dragged, and then the mark of the pencil will show then the pencil hardness. However, in both tests, there has been stated that you have to perform this on many different substrates. So just a paint alone, of one type of paint alone, is not enough to determine this hardness. Now, thinking back of what I said, if you have something that is, for example, so smooth that a 9H pencil is absolutely going to do nothing because the point itself doesn't have any grip on the surface. So we can drag it back and forth as much as we want, but the smoothness will then in fact show that there is no mark because the surface can get a grip to make the scratch. Seemingly giving the idea that the coating is a 9H hardness. So knowing this, we threw this whole situation away and said, okay, blank page, let's start over and take everything that we know from what we made into what we are making now with HPC 2.0. The hardness, the base coat, the blindo, strong, hard, but also rough. Listen to this. By itself, not enough. What do we need more? Top coat. What should the top coat do? Smoothness, beading, and chemical protection. Listen to this. Now these two things are then combined as the full-blown system of your paint protection on the car. The main evolution of HPC to HPC 2.0 was for us to find a way to close the gap between a standalone and a top coat. So the top coat is then able to take over some characteristics of a standalone. So take for example a medium compound that moves into the cutting range of a heavy compound. A rinseless over exceeding the performance of a waterless, although very close to each other. That was one of the main goals, creating HPC 2.0 with that polysiloxan. And that said, the polysiloxan is just the raw material. It's like a wheat. The wheat has to turn into a pasta. The pasta then has to be boiled by the chef, adding the other ingredients and then finalizing to the dish itself. So we talked about the polysiloxan. You now know what's inside. But for us detailers, it comes down to the experience of the application and the things that we are looking for. So to get a little bit of a context, we are going to forget about the rules of the flash, of the rainbow, of the micro bubbles, of the sweating, of all these visual effects. But first, we need to show you what we mean with sweating micro bubbles or rainbow. Now, demonstration time. What is it? Now we are going to show you that here on this solid black panel hood. Super black, degreased, most difficult color of them all to apply HPC 2.0 on the surface. And I can hear you think, if something is that easy, can it still do something or is it any good? Let's find that out after this. We used to say it's visual reference. Visual reference, we need a flash time, we need a rainbow, we need micro bubbles. These things have changed with HPC 2.0. There is no per definition of visual reference to the situations that might give you the idea when it's time to wipe off. You have now an extended lifetime before wiping off, meaning you can increase the surface that you are going to coat without having any issues from this side with the application to this side of the removal. That said, it needs to also do something. So for the user experience, one of the, I think one of the most, if not the most important thing is how easy is it to remove? Can we remove the ceramic or can we remove the coating after a certain period of time? Too little, too much. With the I Forgive You technology in here, you will still be able to wipe this off after a considerable amount of time that you would normally surpass on any other ceramic. Let's see what happens during the wipe off. So far the installation, 
But the most important thing about the successful installation of a ceramic coating is the curing. And with that curing often comes a set of rules, namely applying inside of room temperature, not over exceeding the 50% humidity. And we at Labo Cosmetica like to change those rules. So for the preparation of the colder climate, I have prepared a little hood with some HFCC 2.0 that is now curing inside of the fridge. But the cold climate is not too often used for the ceramic coating installation. What if we move to a situation where the temperature rises just a little bit? Let's go. That thing inside HPC 2.0 that's going to allow us to put on HPC 2.0 in the most crazy conditions like this one is what we call the dust out technology. It's the point where we moved our solvent from the traditional petroleum distillates that have these characteristics right after the application to tend to be a little bit greasy, aka sticky, meaning that dust is going to stick to that surface immediately after the application. So with the change of the solvent, making it then extremely delicate, and easy to wipe off. We are allowed or capable to put on HPC 2.0 in a situation just like this. Let's go inside and discuss all the benefits of HPC 2.0. Let's talk about benefits. Benefit number one, we changed the raw material, polysiloxan, the ground of the raw material inside of HPC 2.0. Benefit number two, the solvent. That has also changed, giving us more room and forgiveness during the application. Now we could have shown this video with beading, sheathing, gloss, and all those things that are subjective, but we would like to spend some more time to let you understand the effort and technology and research we went through to get to this finalized product that allows us to coat more surfaces with the same amount of product, have a longer duration of wipe off, more forgiving. There's less chance, if any, for any halos, streaks, rainbows, bubbles, what you need to look for, for all those dangerous things that can either turn into something like a nightmare during the installation. We want to reduce the stress. You're at the end of the operation. You've just finished 20 hours of polishing. There is nothing allowed to go wrong. Anything that goes wrong after this sequence, meaning more work and more stress. We don't want the stress anymore. The main capitalization of this product is that the ground material is going to help us achieve this result with ease. We have dual clima, cold, warm. We've tested it with pH 14, very strong, caustic, with no lubrification using a wool microfiber mitt. It's not a wool microfiber mitt, it's a wool mitt. Very abrasive, no lubrification, and then achieve what the old HPC could do in 30 washes, doubled it up for the HPC 2.0 in 60 washes, then we move to HPC Pro, with 120 washes on alkaline. So if you put it on neutral, you can multiply that easily by three or four. And if you think this is special, wait until you find out what we did with this. That said, I'm gonna thank you guys for watching because it's been a long run. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, share and everything because this technology needs to get out there in the world. We wanna thank the dealers. We wanna thank the detailers that helped us create this. And I especially want to thank the team of Labo Cosmetica allowing me to be first hand inside of this project 
from the beginning to the end, creating now my first son in Lava Cosmetica, HPC 2.0. Thank you guys for watching. See you next time. Labo. Labo Cosmetica.